Students at San Diego's Patrick Henry High School got to see a living, breathing scientist as part of the San Diego Science Festival's inaugural Nifty 50 program, an effort to bring middle and high school students in contact with local scientists. Although the program was initially designed to incorporate 50 presentations, more than 150 scientists signed up to speak at schools from Oceanside to San Isidro, including Dr. Larry Smarr, director of the California Institute for Telecommunications and Information Technology, CalIT2, at the University of California, San Diego. I thought this was a really great opportunity. Uh, the Science Festival in San Diego has done such a great job to allow uh, engineers and scientists to get out and, and, and talk to the high school kids. Um, I asked, you know, has, is this a very common occurrence? And they said, no, it's not. You know, so I think they're really making a difference uh, here in San Diego. Smarr told the story of his life as a scientist in pictures. Well, as far as I can remember, I was always a scientist uh, or an engineer. And I had a lot of things to tinker with. Uh, this was our Lionel train set that got incrementally bigger every year. Um, and trying to keep the trains from crashing and just missing each other. And I had chemistry sets, I had erector sets, I had optics uh, sets, uh, you know, I built Tesla coils. Well, that's me graduate, that's my senior high school, that sort of sets it all, says it all, doesn't it? <laughs> now that's 1966, right? And the, and the summer of love is 67 and Chicago and the riots and everything are 68 and the assassinations, uh, it was a pretty, it's, it's impossible for any of you to really imagine what it was like living through those times. If there was one thing Smar wanted to instill in the high school students, it was an understanding of just how profoundly the climate crisis will affect them and generations to come. You probably know that because the world is, China and India are waking up and uh, industrializing and creating vast middle classes, that the amount of carbon dioxide that's being put into the atmosphere is causing the temperature uh, of the earth to rise. And at the rate this is going, it will essentially, the disasters that this is gonna, the climate disruption across the world that this is gonna create, this will be the single most important thing that you deal with for the rest of your lives, as well as everybody else on earth. And here's some charts from it. This is the amount of uh, CO2 emission that is caused by all the computers um, and telecom around the world. And you can see in 2007, it's up to 2% of the total CO2 emission. That's the same as the aviation industry. So just using computers and the internet around the world generates as much CO2, that is the electricity that needs to be generated to run those things or to cool them, as the entire, everybody flying in the world, right? Except that we're going up very quickly. During a Q&A session following Smar's talk, several students asked about the future of virtual sports, the energy-saving benefits of methane fuel, and the potential for the technologies Smar described to help solve some of humanity's greatest problems, including the current energy crisis. If you put solar cells on your roof, you can power your house, and then you gradually use less and less off the grid. And so this distributed generation of energy is going to be a major change in the world you're going into. You know, like the wind energy is mainly generated at night, and that's when we don't need it because we're not air conditioning and all that stuff. And so it largely gets wasted, even though it's a great renewable energy source. That's just what we need to charge up our Priuses batteries at night when we get plug-in Priuses. And so there's this whole system change in the what's called the smart electric grid. Coming. And if you want to want to go into a hot area in engineering, think about going into the smart electric grid. The Cal IT2 director's talk at Patrick Henry High School was part of the wider San Diego Science Festival, and organizers estimate that the festival's combined activities had a positive impact on more than 100,000 students and their families throughout the greater San Diego area.